Hey, this is Jonathan with Limitless Mindset, and this is my deep dive book review on the tapping solution for pain relief. And this is, I'm going to be sharing with you here, a surprisingly simple solution for chronic pain relief. And you are definitely going to want to go and check out the article that I have linked below wherever you're listening to this podcast because I put some work into this one. I did a great article. It's got some some cool visuals and icons that I organized to go along with it. Sorry about this quick interruption. I've got an important call to action for you please go watch this video and subscribe to Limitless Mindset over on one of the alt tech platforms, Rumble or Odyssey. And that is where you can catch my latest videos along with browsing my entire library of content and videos and podcasts. Over 700 pieces of edifying content about biohacking, nootropics, smart drugs, anti-aging, life hacking, about my pragmatic full-spectrum anti-fragility philosophy. If you value health freedom, I urge you to get outside of your digital comfort zone just a little and vote for the kind of future you want with your attention. Join and use the pro free speech social media platforms. I have the links below this video to where you can connect with me on those platforms. I do pay more attention to the comments that I get on those. Please don't procrastinate any further in taking back your freedom and your privacy from big tech. Don't even pause this video. Just pick one of the alt tech platforms. I think that Odyssey is the best. It's kind it's a lot like YouTube. It's as good as YouTube as a video platform, but there's no annoying ads interrupting the videos. So just pick one of those. Again, I've got them linked below and join it in another tab or window while we get back to what you clicked on. And you may have noticed here on the Limitless Mindset podcast that I do something a little bit different than what you'll find probably in the majority of podcasts out there, which is deep dives. I read books on really thorny, in-depth subjects, and then I do a lot of research on those subjects. I go out there on PubMed. I go and read what people are saying in uh, book reviews, because sometimes, uh, or things like Amazon reviews and Goodreads reviews, sometimes those reviews can provide a lot of supplementary evidence for what is being talked about in a book. And then I go and scour the internet for, for interesting little factoids that are relevant to the subject. And recently you'll have noted, I've been on kind of a uh, I've been on kind of a roll of doing deep dive presentations on black pill subjects, which black pill, if you don't know, that is internet parlance for a depressing and tragic and uh, unjust, perhaps, truth on a particular subject. And this one is going to be on a quote unquote white pill subjects. This is a reason for optimism that I'm going to be that I'm going to be breaking down for you here in this MP3. And yeah, so white pill is like something that's positive, something something that's good, something that's helpful out there. And that's going to be the subject of pain relief, which I know is boy, something that it seems like a lot of people struggle with. 
And so these deep dives, they are research intensive. I've got to put anywhere from 10 to 15 hours into reading a book. And then a lot of times I have to put equal time into going out there on the internet and tracking down the facts on it, and then organizing all of this into an article that I relay to you in a podcast. And this is a whole lot more time consuming than doing podcasting or live streams or uh, YouTube videos the way a lot of people do them, which is that they kind of just rant about a subject or maybe what they do is they get on their computer and they just browse the internet while they're looking at a particular subject and then they just comment uh, on the spot on what they are reading about on the internet. And I don't find that to be a particularly rigorous way of uh, making an argument and especially making recommendations that people are going to be taking to heart when they are addressing the health issues. I try to do things rigorously here for you. And I don't have like a Patreon account or something like that where people are paying me for, you know, each one of these that I put out. So if you appreciate the work that I do, then I would appreciate it if you would do what you can to signal boost this podcast. And that kind of depends on where you are listening to it. This podcast gets syndicated out on a bunch of different podcast players. So if you're listening on iTunes, you can leave it a five-star review and importantly, leave a uh, a, a few comments of just what you appreciate about the about the podcast itself. When you submit that five star review, you can give it an upvote. You can give it a heart. There's all sorts of different ways that you can signal boost it. One of the most important is, of course, sharing it with someone that it's going to be relevant to. And it seems like. All of us know someone that struggles with chronic pain. It really is a prolific public health problem. So you probably got someone in your life that does, it might be an everyday thing. Jeez, it might be an every hour, every every hour of the day kind of thing for them that they struggle with. And what I'm gonna share here, it could really help. So please do them and me a favor and share this with them. This is, again, my book review of this great book, which is a series of books that's done by a guy named Nick Ortner. And it's on the subject of tapping, okay? And tapping is an application of emotional freedom techniques. So on the surface, this is kind of a woo-woo thing, but here's the important thing to keep in mind. It's free and there's no risks or downsides. And this book thoroughly documents numerous case studies of it sometimes instantaneously working wonders, providing badly needed relief for those suffering from treatment-resistant chronic pain. So that's awesome. And you're saying to yourself, what are emotional freedom techniques? Again, it sounds kind of like a woo-woo thing. And it's uh, used also in the acronym EFT, emotional freedom techniques. Here's what it is. Quote, the incredible results that tapping has in alleviating chronic pain may be explained at least in part by its ability to access what are called meridian channels. You can think of meridian channels as a fiber optic network in the body. They carry a large amount of information, often electrical and often beyond what the nervous system or chemical systems of the body carry. And I've got a cool diagram that shows this in the article. Because tapping sends calming, relax, relaxing signals directly to the amygdala, it may also be it may also help us to override the brain's negativity negativity bias more rapidly. 
One of the most amazing benefits of EFT is how quickly it can produce real, long-lasting pain relief, regardless of the diagnosis, condition, duration, or severity of the pain. Tapping is an especially powerful way to experience more positive feelings because it allows you to quiet your amygdala, the primitive part of the brain programmed for survival. This is where the negativity bias we learned about earlier kicks into high gear, always scanning for threats as you encode positive experiences into your brain. And all this talk about amygdala, it reminds me of this 90s movie called Relic, where there are some... Uh, there's a, there's a good looking woman, the uh, starlet of the film, and she's like the super smart scientist lady or uh, anthropologist lady maybe. And she works in this museum and then somehow some sort of uh, fantastic thing happens and one of her coworkers gets turned into this terrible monster. And I think in the movie they do a, a dissection of the brain and they discover that something with the amygdala gets turned over into overdrive. And that's why her uh, coworker has been transformed into this, this terrible monster. So maybe I'll leave the trailer to that movie in the article and it'll bring back some memories of the 90s for you. So I know what you're thinking, especially if you struggle with chronic pain, which is, well, my pain is physiological, not emotional. So emotional freedom techniques are not going to have, not, not probably going to help me much. And trust me, I'll be addressing that. But first of all, I want to talk about how to tap. And a podcast is a poor medium to show you how to do this. You're going to want to go watch the YouTube videos demonstrating the technique as it is simple, hard to screw up, and it takes just a few minutes. I actually published a video yesterday doing it myself. So you can go and check out that video. I do have it on all of my video channels along with in the article linked below this podcast. So you can see where you're tapping on doing the karate chop style tap and then tapping in between your nose and then on the side of your eye and then below your eye and then a couple of other places on your body. And as you tap, you voice the pain you're experiencing along with your feelings and frustration about it because you certainly have frustration about it. And you tap seven to 10 times in each of the nine spots, again, that you can see there in the video that I did. So if you embrace any shade or type of spirituality, you understand that our words have power. I'm a Christian and the Bible has a lot to say about the transformative power of our words. From Proverbs 18.21, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. That's a great verse for uh, biohacker, life hacker types, isn't it? So while tapping, address your pain vocally. Repeat a self-acceptance affirmation and verbally release your pain. And if you're not sure exactly what to say, the book contains a number of scripts that you can follow. An important line to repeat is, even though I'm feeling frustrated with this pain, I choose to feel calm and patient and release this pain now. And you might be saying to yourself, Jonathan, this all sounds like a bunch of pseudo-spiritual nonsense. I'm an evidence-based empiricist. Well, if you or a loved one suffers from chronic pain, tapping is worth trying because, again, it's free, easy to do, and often works right away. 
also consider the specter of chronic pain. Quote, more than 100 million Americans, which is crazy because that's almost like one third of Americans, suffer from chronic pain. And that's just a small sampling of the number of people suffering around the world. Pain is an epidemic public health problem, and tapping is worth trying. It's free to everyone and has no nasty side effects, unlike pharmaceutical painkillers and cortisone-based drugs. However, tapping would not be on my biohacking radar if there wasn't decent evidence for it. So let's look at the scientific evidence. While EFT might just seem like a woo-woo thing, there are over 40 scientific papers published about it, including 15 human clinical trials, which is nothing to scoff at. That's a decent amount of clinical research on the subject. So there was a title, there was a clinical trial entitled Reductions in Pain, Depression, and Anxiety Symptoms After PTSD Remediation in Veterans. And that was done by the Foundation for Epigenetic Medicine with 59 American military veterans suffering from pain and PTSD. And it found decre it found pain decreased significantly during the intervention period and after three and six months, pain remained significantly lower than at pretest. And the abstract of the paper concluded, the ability of EFT to produce reliable and long-term gains after relatively brief interventions indicates its utility in reducing the estimated trillion dollar cost of treating veteran health disorders in the coming years. The book mentions other studies. Quote, one randomized control study of patients suffering from tension headaches at the Red Cross Hospital in Athens showed a greater than 50% decrease in the intensity and frequency of headaches after tapping. A different study examined 216 healthcare workers who experienced a 68% drop in physical pain after a one-day tapping workshop. Separate studies involved veterans as well as fibromyalgia sufferers who have also shown significant decreases in physical pain after tapping. And then we should also look at the anecdotal evidence. And the book is rife with inspiring accounts of transformative healing. For example, when she woke up in the morning, she was amazed that her headache, as well as her neck discomfort and nausea, were completely gone. Within 24 hours time, she'd been able to resolve 12 years of nearly constant pain. Wow. And then another one, six months after the retreat, Patricia was still using tapping on a regular basis to process her emotions and transform other beliefs. She was also hiking, doing yoga, traveling, and more. Her back pain was gone. She no longer needed medication for pain relief or sleep. That's great, isn't it? And then from some of the reviews of the book, one person reported, I started tapping one night, and as the author states, my pain may become more intense. And it did. An hour later, though, it was nearly gone. As I continued day after day, my pain was responding. It got more intense. It moved. It changed. But I was affecting it. It's only been a month, and my pain is progressively diminishing in intensity and duration. Now I have successfully used it to, cl used it to clear stuffy sinuses, soothe a, a bad 
stomach ache, calm anger associated with the back pain, and even curb craving for unhealthy food. Another person reported, after 20 years of severe chronic pain and thousands of dollars spent on pain treatments and remedies, I was at my wit's end. But what I found in this book was worth much more than pain relief. And then a final person said, this book changed my life. I have been diagnosed with osteoarthritis in my knees and back and possibly rheumatoid arthritis, along with having chronic sciatic issues since a young age due to a sports injury. Boy, that should make you rethink uh, letting your kids get into sports. I did one session, yes, one session, and my pain was reduced. Typically, my knee is at a nine on the SUDS, that is a pain uh, scoring system, and my back was around a nine as well. Today, my knee is at a one and my back is pain-free. This is the first time in a whole year that I awoke with no pain. Thank you, Nick. That's the author. So you might say, okay, good for those people, but this sounds like a placebo effect dependent thing. And I wouldn't totally disagree with you. But as biohackers, we are pragmatists first and theorists second. I care more that it works for many people than why it works. You'll want to check out my other review of Dr. Joe Dispenza's excellent book, Demystifying the Placebo Effect and Explaining How to Yield It. I contend that these are two things that kind of go together. So next, we have to talk about the emotional cause of chronic pain. One of the most important points that the book makes is that chronic pain is often the result of unresolved, suppressed emotions, stress, and trauma. And boy, we've all got some of that, especially, especially after the year 2020, right? And we're only halfway through it. So research has shown that emotions such as fear and anxiety can increase pain. Negative emotions may also turn short-term pain into a chronic condition. In other words, your emotional state at the time of injury or during the hours immediately after the injury occurs may help to determine whether your pain will become chronic, whether it will occur in several places or just in one and so on. Let me repeat that line. It's kind of important. Your emotional state at the time of the injury or during the hours immediately after the injury occurs may help to determine whether your pain becomes chronic. Our emotions and anatomy are part of the same intricately interconnected system. Until we process and release the deeper emotions that have gotten stuck in the body, we can't heal chronic pain. As you tap, remember to tune in to any shifts you experience in your pain, small or large. Tune in to how your body and your emotional state are shifting. And if you struggle with pain, I know what you're probably thinking. You're thinking, maybe others have chronic pain because of their unresolved emotions, but not me. I've got a handle on my emotions. My pain has a physiological cause. I get it. It's hard to countenance the notion that our pain might be something that we are kind of doing to ourselves. But the book is full of examples of people diagnosed with serious physiological conditions who experienced great relief from tapping and the emotional freedom techniques. The good thing about tapping is that it will, in all likelihood, work 
regardless of what you think the ultimate source of your pain is. So it's important to ask yourself, what was happening in your life when the pain first started? Think about that a bit if you're experiencing chronic pain. As is often the case, the pain began while you were dealing with some challenging life event. You failed to manage this stress or trauma at the time. You just soldiered on, internalized all those emotions. So they manifested as the pain that you now can't seem to get rid of. And let's address another important point, which is that anger equals pain. Quote, once repressed rage has reached a certain level in the unconscious mind, the brain begins to create physical symptoms such as chronic pain. By limiting blood flow to one or several areas of the body. And this point about anger makes me think about the state of my country, the USA, in the current year, 2020. In America, people are mad. We are a divided and angry country, and it's just getting worse. Tens of millions are seething angry with President Trump or with watching Western civilization break down so badly or both. And very few are channeling that raw emotion productively and doing meditation before bed to release all that pent up rage. Venting vitriolically on social media in all caps, as you've certainly seen, is not the way to release anger about politics. In fact, it probably just perpetuates the chronic anger, especially when you get in a pointless Facebook argument with your aunt. I predict that America's chronic pain problem will just get worse as kind of a downstream effect of all this political rage. If you want to get all fired up about politics, well, that's certainly your right, but I would urge you to get some exercise, make love, or do some meditation at the end of the day to just release some of that emotion. Because even if you fall asleep, even if you feel like you're, you're sleeping well, unless you're typically yeah, if, unless you typically have something like a physical outlet or a mindfulness practice, that emotion sticks with you and it changes you. About myself, around 2017, here's a couple of life hacks for dealing with the, the political rage. Around 2017, I just stopped following anyone on social media who posted things that ticked me off, which probably puts me into a quote-unquote echo chamber, but I waste a whole lot less time in pointless arguments and I don't get my cortisol spiked every time I log on to social media. It's pretty nice. And I also did what people always threaten to do the day after a presidential election where a candidate that they don't like gets elected to be in charge of the country, which is that I moved to a country that aligns pretty closely with my politics and ideological worldview. And it's great here. And living in a place that aligns with your worldview and your politics, boy, it relieves a whole lot of stress. You, If you're curious about that, I'm not going to get into politics any more than I have already in this podcast, but you might want to go and check out the article that I wrote. I think it's a rather witty article I did about the country that I moved to, and I link to it in this article. Whether you're angry and irritated by the intensifying real-life idiocracy that we seem to be living in, particularly if you're in America, or whether you're just angry and irritated about your dramatic family, frustra frustrating roommates, or in my case, it's my wife's tyrannical little pet Pomeranian. That's the main thing that irritates me in life. <laughs> 
all of that anger, you can release with tapping. And boy, I hope you do. At least, at least for the duration of 2020, at least for the duration of this crazy year and might get crazier next year. You never know. So here's from the book. One of the most powerful ways to express and release anger is to tap while imagining yourself saying and doing things you wish you could say and do to whomever you're angry at. So if you if you're potentially a person that's seething angry with Donald Trump and I'm not sure how many people in my audience are that way but maybe there's probably a few there's probably a few I'm not I'm not you know overjoyed with Donald Trump every day myself. So what you would do is you would do tapping while you were expressing your anger with Donald Trump and you would in turn be releasing that anger, you'd be resolving it, vocalizing it, and then you'd be releasing it so that it didn't stick with you and manifest in something terrible. Okay, quote, by giving yourself the experience of expressing your anger verbally, as well as physically while tapping, you can release it from the body more easily and quickly. It's an incredibly powerful way of processing anger without causing any harm to others and or your relationships. So you wanna let it all out while tapping. All of our emotions are healthy and normal, including anger, sadness, rage, rage, fear, and more, as long as we let ourselves feel them and let them go. One of the big lies that we've been told is that Anger is an unhealthy emotion that we we shouldn't be angry angry. It's okay to be angry, but boy, you gotta you gotta have you know good biohacker habits to make sure that that anger does not get is not a weapon that gets turned back on you, right? The only emotions that the body sees as threatening are the ones we don't fully express. When we're looking to relieve chronic pain, one of the most important changes we can make is to let ourselves feel and express more of our emotions when we're tapping. To begin that process, we first need to retrain our brains to know that it's safe to express emotions, especially negative ones. Using tapping, we can let the unconscious mind know that we won't be hurt or harmed if we let it all out. And then you want to, importantly, tap on the positive. Tapping is an especially powerful way to experience more positive feelings because it allows you to quiet your amygdala, the primitive part of the brain programmed for survival. This is where the negativity bias we learned about earlier kicks into high gear, always scanning for threats as you encode positive experiences into your brain. Rather than letting positive thoughts and experiences just fade away, do some tapping on them throughout your day. Whenever your pain goes down, tap on how good your body feels. Stand in the sunshine and tap while letting yourself feel uh, how good that light and warmth feels on your skin. Stop to notice a pretty flower, smell it, and tap while you feel that appreciation and enjoyment. So that's a great little life hack, isn't it? Because the, the positive in life, you know, life tends to be a lot of suffering, a lot of mundanity, some boredom, and a bit of positivity and a bit of enjoyment. And so when you get to savor a bit of that enjoyment, you want to hardwire it into your nervous system, the way that all the negativity and the trauma gets hardwired into your nervous system. So take a minute to tap in the uh, method demonstrated in the videos again, when you are experiencing something sublime that you really enjoy. Unsurprisingly, quote, those findings suggest that intense feelings of romantic love may provide or increase pain relief in the body. So yeah, if you're in love, if you have a lover, if you've got a wife, girlfriend, husband, 
uh, boyfriend, whatever, that's great. You know, having a uh, monogamous, having real love in your life and physical affection, this is something that makes a difference in pain relief, certainly. Okay, next important point. Your pain may be your past. Another point the book makes that a lot of people in pain are probably resistant to is that chronic pain is often a manifestation of the tragedies and abuse in our past. Quote, looking at the past doesn't seem necessary and it's often uncomfortable. However, in my years using tapping as a pain relief tool, I've seen more dramatic lasting results from working through unresolved childhood memories and emotion than virtually any other area of my focus and work. That's what the author said, and he's been working with, I imagine, thousands of people doing this tapping thing and helping them to overcome their pain. Ask yourself, did you experience any physical symptoms as a kid? If so, your body may have been trying to get your attention. Make note of any childhood symptoms you experienced in your journal, including what activities you were doing, whom you were with, and so on, when the symptoms appeared. Then be sure to tap through those memories and release any remaining emotional charge. If tapping doesn't provide immediate relief, that doesn't necessarily mean it's not working. It often requires an emotional journey through your past. And the book, you're going to want to read the book for this, as it outlines a method for tapping to release emotions that have been pent up kind of in layers for years or decades. Quote, in many ways, you may feel like your body has betrayed you, imprisoning you in pain and preventing you from living the life you know is still possible. Like I said before, I understand that getting connected with your body may be the last thing you want to do because this is where you feel the pain the most, but it's time to make peace with your body. It's time to begin listening to what your body and pain are trying to tell you. Okay, next we have to talk about dealing with a debilitating diagnosis or misdiagnosis. A chapter of the book addresses a major cause of chronic pain, which is actually the traumatic diagnosis experience itself. If you or a loved one is struggling with some kind of pain or troublesome recurrent symptom, understand, please understand, that when you go to see a doctor, they are not in the business of telling you, I don't know what's causing this. It might not be a big deal. Just give it time and your body will probably deal with it on its own. Oh no, when dealing with doctors, when dealing with people in hospitals, they will rush to judgment, diagnosing you with some scary sounding medical condition. And astoundingly, doctors will often rudely give you this dire diagnosis. They'll say something like, you've got this terrifying chronic medical condition. And there's no cure. You'll have it forever. You can manage the pain with this medication or this drug or this surgery that we want to get you booked in for. And then they will rush out of the room. You'll get your five minutes with them. They won't answer any of your question. And they will be on to deliver more bad news to their next patient. Or maybe they're going to go to lunch or go golfing or whatever it is that doctors do when they're not spending their uh, five minutes there with you. So from the book, these are just two of the hundreds of stories I've heard from clients who have been given a devastating diagnosis. 
that diagnosis and often the terrible manner it's delivered in can be like getting punched in the face. You're already stressed out by being at the doctor's office and in walks the man or woman in the lab coat to deliver a diagnosis that seems larger than life, like a life sentence you can't control or avoid. A diagnosis can quickly become an integral part of who you are and what you're capable of doing. But when we're suffering from pain that won't go away, we don't stop to ask ourselves whether our emotions could be causing it. Instead, we focus our attention on our physical anatomy as the primary source of pain. If you've read much World War I history or listened to some of those great really, really detailed, long, exhaustive podcasts out there about World War I history, you know that one of the main reasons this terrible war happened, unleashing a century of global war, was that the military, was that military generals were sent to address relatively minor territorial disputes and ethnic friction. When the British, German, French, and Austrian-Hungarian leaders should have sent diplomats in to talk, instead they turned to military generals. So the military generals did what military men do, which is preparing for and going to war. And going into the hospital to talk to a doctor about your pain is analogous. Instead of dealing diplomatically with your pain, they are going to diagnose and prescribe so you can go to war against your body. And the results are predictable. The pain persists and a lot of times gets worse as you endure surgery and go on one drug after another. And the book mentions a, a possible kind of example of this that I term the herniated disc hoax. And I put a question mark after that because it's something I'm not actually certain about. We've all known people diagnosed with a herniated disc or two or three, and they were in pain, especially when they had to walk up or down stairs. They had to get surgeries, which never really seemed to help that much. They took drugs with unpronounceable names, and they were generally not very happy people. And there's some evidence that herniated discs might not be the real problem. Quote, many who suffer from lower back pain are diagnosed with a herniated disc and told that's the cause of the pain that's robbing them of sleep, limiting their mobility, and making their daily lives like torture. What's surprising is that studies have found no conclusive evidence that herniated discs cause pain, especially chronic pain. Studies show that many people with many people whose x-rays reveal a herniated disc have no pain, while others who, whose x-rays reveal no herniated disc or other abnormalities report excruciating pain. That's, that's interesting. That's something to think about, isn't it? My elderly father-in-law was plagued with several herniated discs for over a year. He underwent surgery, which helped some. And while he was waiting to do the second surgery, I had him use my red light therapy device twice daily. And he ended up canceling his second surgery because a few months of the photobiomodulation therapy assuaged his pain so effectively and actually restored a lot of his mobility. So that would be kind of a 
personal confirmatory anecdotal evidence about the uh, herniated disc issue. You may want to look at things like tapping and red light therapy if you're diagnosed with a herniated disc. Next important point, get some exercise. Counterintuitively, if you're in pain, you want to get some exercise. According to Dr. John Sarno, and he is the author of Healing Back Pain, according to him, resuming regular exercise is one of the best things you can do to relieve pain. And here's the case for resuming physical exercise. It should be noted parenthetically that the advice to resume normal physical activity, including the most vigorous, has been given to a very large number of patients over the past 17 years. I cannot recall one person who has subsequently said that this advice advice caused him, caused him to have further back trouble. That's what Dr. John Sarno said, who is apparently like the world expert on this. His book was very highly rated there on Amazon. Looks like very popular work that's helped a whole lot of people. While Sarno's approach may seem radical to some, outside research confirms his findings. One study published by BMJ, formerly known as the British Medical Journal, 187 patients between, that's a statistically significant number of patients, between the ages of 18 and 60, who had low back pain were monitored over a 12-week period. They were randomly divided into two groups. Only the intervention group was led through a program that included physical exercise, while the non-intervention group received only standard primary care treatment for back pain. After six weeks, the intervention group which was exercising regularly, showed modest improvement over the non-intervention group. After six months, the intervention group showed significant improvement over the non-exercisers. At the one-year mark, so you can see this is a really thorough study. They went a whole year. The intervention group was still exercising and showed significant pain relief. The regular exercisers also had less need for medical intervention to manage their back pain and took significantly fewer days off of work. And that's great news, isn't it? The understandable instinct of someone is in pain is that I'll get back to exercising when I'm pain-free. But the science indicates that this may be what is keeping them in pain. If you're worried about exercise inflaming the pain site, you wanna do low intensity exercise, you know, and work your way up into maybe a bit more higher intensity exercise. As Dr. John Sarno said, even vigorous exercise was, was helpful. So you'd wanna probably start with low intensity and then you'd want to use other holistic pain hacks after exercise. And I'll delve into other holistic pain hacks shortly. Okay, and then finally, I'll mention the re-injury paradox. That's a cool phrase that I just came up with myself. When you're injured, multiple chemicals are released on the cellular level, including all the emotions, which are chemicals, and they are stored in the cell receptors around the injured area. Immediately, immediately, your body takes on a fear of re-injury and develops a memory of protection around the injured area. And you begin to move in a way to protect the part of the body that was injured. You are now open to additional injuries because you are not moving, running, walking, making plays, and so on in your normal way. So that's a problem. Get some exercise. It'll make you, it'll make you feel better in so many different 
ways. And here's my conclusion on the book. Because of the science done and the abundance of powerful anecdotal evidence, tapping deserves a place in the biohacker's tool chest. If you're struggling with pain, you would want to stack tapping with other holistic healing hacks like red light therapy, HRV training, and importantly, Dr. Dispenza style epigenetic meditation sessions. And you could do all four in one sitting. Boy, that's cool, isn't it? And in the article, I have links to all of those other things because you're going to want to do a little bit of research. You're going to want to you know, know exactly what you're doing before you combine all those things together. The tapping itself is free, as is the epigenetic meditation technique. Actually, that costs $6 for the, the audio track to do it. The red light therapy and the HRV training, those are a bit pricey. So you want to you wanna do your research on them before you uh, make those particular expenses. But these are the things that you'd want to combine. And honestly, you would also want to use some natural medicine for pain management. I'm talking about CBD and possibly crotum as well. But you're going to want to go and watch my videos about crotum where I speak honestly about the upsides and the downsides to it. CBD is probably a better option for most people out there. And I rated this book four stars over there on Goodreads. Maybe if you're using Goodreads, go and look me up on Goodreads and connect with me so me and you can be uh, Goodreads buddies because I post I post some good book reviews on Goodreads. I've got some book reviews over there on, on some things that are totally unrelated to biohacking that you might find interesting. So I gave this one four stars. And here's why. Frankly, I, me and my wife use the tapping and it didn't work that much for us. My wife has been struggling with an odd pain issue in her leg. And we tried the tapping technique a number of times and it just barely helped her. I also developed an irritating case of pink eye for a few days. I tried the tapping and the relief was just barely noticeable. So this is a thing that doesn't work for everybody and it doesn't work all the way, but I can't say that we found it totally useless. I'm sharing it with you because it does help a lot of people. But, you know, I guess don't get your hopes up too high because it uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Worth a try. And then my other criticism of the book is that it's not very well sourced. I didn't come across footnotes to the studies the author referenced, which is why in this article, I link to the clinical trials done with EFT. So please, please, authors out there, if you're going to write a book about homeopathic alternative medicine, include ample links to the science in your books. Otherwise, it just seems like rank pseudoscience. The hospital, pharmaceutical, industrial complex would love for the regulating agencies to make things like tapping illegal, to totally take away our, our health freedom. You know, if these people had their druthers, every homeopathic practitioner and alternative healing author out there would be thrown in a gulag to rot and their books would be burned, right? You know, uh, fascist style. So let's not give them ammunition by skimping on the footnotes to credible science in books. But the bottom line is that if you struggle with pain, read the book and try tapping. It might help you. And I would actually love to hear from those of you out there. 
I wanna hear if you guys and gals have tried this, if it's worked for you. I wanna hear if there are other kind of woo-woo biohacks that you've also tried for things like pain relief. And I wanna hear if they've helped and go and do check out the video that I made of me demoing this. And I gotta say for that video, I created a great GIF to go along with this. You all have probably seen my GIFs out there on the internet. And this GIF that I did for the tapping, it's gotta be one of my very best GIFs. So go and check that out, just, just, just to enjoy that GIF. Anyways, I'm Jonathan with Limitless Mindset, and I look forward to a continued conversation with you.